Hello everybody, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. So again, an intro, hello. Uh, this week, definitely diving back into the world of Magnolia Parks, reading the second book, as well as, you know, going through some other rom-coms because... You know, we gotta put the laugh and live, laugh, love. So that's what's up for the reading. Before we jump into Monday's little clip, which does have a, listen, we got a lot of stuff to unbox as well. That's gonna occur. But before we dive into that, I do need to thank today's sponsor, which is June's Journey. So June's Journey is a hidden object mystery game that is set in the 1920s. Y'all already know how I feel about mysteries in the 1920s. Favorite book is The Diviners. Shout out to it. Kind of sounds a little bit like this game. It features gorgeous drawings and an interesting storyline to draw you in. It is a free to download mobile game so you can take it with you on the go and play it anywhere that you want to. Y'all already know how I feel about my games when I listen to my audiobooks and I play with them. I love to play a good game while I'm listening to an audiobook. There's just something so relaxing about it. It's the perfect setup for me. And I really do think that this game falls in line with that. It's fun, it's relaxing, and it's very interesting as well because like I said, there is that mystery storyline to go along with it if you wanna play that route. I've personally really enjoyed playing it just to wind down at the end of a day, in the evening time, you know, after you've put the face masks on, you've done the skincare routine, you've taken a shower, you're in bed pull this game up and just play and it's been really relaxing actually. So you may find it to be the same for you and if you want to check it out and see if that is true, love rhyming, you can use the link down in the description below. As always, all the information will be there for you. And thank you once again to June's Journey for sponsoring today's video. Hello, it is I. Too lazy to take the headphones off, but I am on sprints and I'm now listening to the last part of The Last Housewife. I actually got 60% into it yesterday, was not planning on that, but I legitimately, if I didn't have to be up semi-early this morning, I would have just finished the whole thing. I truly would have. It, it, pff, listen. Listen, listen, it is so good. It is so intense. It is so fast paced. I'm just loving this book. Like it is so, it is leaps and bounds better than In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. It really is. I do debate rereading that book because I'm like, did I just really not like the ending, but that build up was good? Because I've been really trying lately this year to read books that are thrillers for the entirety of the book, not solely the plot twist. Because I do think like, and you know, whatever, I know a lot of people are like, well, the thriller's only as good as its plot twist. And I, there's like room for that too. But for me, I don't think it's fair to judge the entirety of a work based on the ending. Just because I like the mystery as well. I like the, you know, ride to the end just as much as I like the ending if that makes sense so i'm hoping that this one because the ride's good the ride, we're having a time there are twists and turns if you like 
This, uh, I was just talking about it on Sprints with Katie, but I don't really know if I want to open up this discussion because it involves a certain figure, a high alpha male value, high men, whatever, high value man, alpha, questionable, uh, with the last name Tate, okay? Uh, it reminds me kind of of that conversation that's going on right now. The cult in here has his energy, and... It'll be so satisfying if she just lights the whole thing on fire. <laughs> I will love it. Um, I have no idea what's going to happen, though. It's very interesting. And it's also talking about, like, the indoctrination into cults and how easily done it can be and how hard it is to just, quote-unquote, just leave. And I just... This book is just a lot more than I thought it was going to be, essentially. And I'm really liking it. I really like the audiobook a lot. It's... I don't know. It feels like you're listening to someone narrate a story, but then, well, because literally, hello, what are audiobooks? What a, what a silly, what a silly description, Olivia. But it feels like you're listening to, like, a, a story time from a friend, and then interjected, she plays you, like, a clip from a podcast or a interview clip that her and her friend did. Like it, it feels like it's a three dimensional story time with a friend sitting down and catching up. And it's just so good. I haven't read an audiobook like that in a while. My two favorites are where it's like that, typically with thrillers. And then the other one I like is when a fantasy book is so fantastical and magical that it feels like a campfire story kind of thing. Love that. Love that. So this one definitely is falling into my favorite kind of audiobooks. Highly recommend it. But the plan is to finish this on sprints now. And then I have two books out for delivery that got released today. So I'll show you them when they get here. And then um, I am going to read some more of Air of Fire on sprints after sprints. I'm debating what to do because I, I do want to get into the final strife, but my worry is I want to set that book up for success in my head, if that makes sense. So like reading Air of Fire, it's not an epic fantasy to me. I don't think Sarah Janet is epic fantasy, but it is a long fantasy. And so I, and I'm annotating it like to the gods. So I really want... To have as much bandwidth in the old noggin as I can for the final strife because I feel like that one is epic and it deserves a lot more attention. So I'm thinking of breaking it up by reading one of the books coming is Light Lark. And so I'm thinking about just reading that real quick. It gives me Stephanie Garber vibes. The way it's described, the little quotes that I have seen, the blurbs I've seen, and the writing style. And her writing is like I love Stephanie Garber's writing. Very easy to read, very beautiful. I, I'm i just a big fan of her in general. One of the only authors I've gone to a, a signing for because I just, I really do love her a lot. So I'm thinking about reading Light Lark really quick and then diving back into the final strife. Kind of using Light Lark as a, a palette cleanser, but not switching genres to do so. So not a romance, basically. Um, yeah, glad we could have this dissertation talk out loud. I'm gonna go because now we're on a sprint and I will talk to you guys when I got things to talk to you about, which is probably gonna be an unboxing because it's Tuesday, so hello. Hello, good morning. Let's see how many days I wear this exact outfit. Actually, in my defense, I so stupid. I do change the shirt and I change the pantalones, but then I uh, slide this guy right on top and I put a hat on because I'm like, ooh, the hair. Uh, anywho, not that that matters. I finished a book yesterday. Want to talk about it? Let's talk about it. So I finished The Last Housewife and I gave it four stars. I think it's more of a 3.75 for me. Kind of, but then also I'm like, what about a 4.5? I don't know. I don't know. I liked it a lot. But I'm just like, was it good? But then I look at some of my other faves and I'm like, they weren't good. So let's just talk about good for me. 
I think it was pretty good for me. We'll just settle out of four. So what I really liked about this one was the style hello, the style of storytelling that our author went with. I thought it was really cool to include podcast episodes as well as, uh, what's it called? Podcast episodes as well as interviews and little snippets and things like that. I thought that was great. What I loved is each time there was a snippet from the podcast or an interview, they would ended on a cliffhanger from that of like them stopping the recording or whatever and then the next chapter would be discussing what happened after that stop. So it very much felt like we were listening to a podcast but getting the behind the scenes of the entire thing versus just hearing the story telling recounting of it and I thought that was really cool. I thought it was really well done. I haven't seen a podcast book do it that way so I liked it a lot. Um, I think that it is pretty realistic, you know. This story I feel is very realistic. I feel it's very ironic the time that it's happening in. Um, just with like, you know, things going on on the internet. Quick random question has nothing to do with the person I'm thinking of that I think would totally run a thing like this. What color is your Bugatti? Uh, and then also, I really enjoyed the relationship that was in there. And I thought that the main character was pretty swell. She made some decisions that I was like, I mean, like I get why, but also girl, what? So uh, yeah, yeah, I think all in all, it was a pretty solid book. And I think my phone needs to shut up. I would recommend it. I would recommend the audiobook. I feel like it was very fast paced. I finished it in I think 16 hours. So what's going on? Couldn't tell ya. Hello. He's like, I gotta go. I can't do this anymore. So I have this that I want to show you. I bought four art prints and I want to hang them up, I think in my office, because I moved the tree out of my office to put in here, because I think it just looks better next to the record player. And so I want to create a wall collage of bookish art, how I did in the old house. So the first one, if course, is Miss Evelyn Hugo. And I think that she looks so gorgeous. She really does. Hello, Ginger. Uh, then I have this one, which is Crescent City. And then this one, I have not read this book and I can't actually remember. It's one of the Emily Henry's, which I am reading soon. I just don't remember which one, but I liked it. I thought it was just cute anyways. And I was like, even if I don't enjoy the book, that's cute art. And then I got The Love Hypothesis, which despite the oddities, performed on thine chest in that book. I still enjoyed the book quite a bit and honestly I kind of want to reread it but I did get love on the brain yesterday. I'll show when we go to the office next I'll show you the office is literally like 100 feet away. I just don't feel like going in there um but I did get Love on the Brain and Light Lark. And I started a little bit of Light Lark last night because I don't really know what I want to read next. And it's okay. It's fine. Uh, it's not anything super groundbreaking. It does remind me a bit of Carvel in the writing and just kind of like the flowery vagueness. But I loved that freaking book. So we'll see how that goes. However, I did get my Aluma Crate. And I'm very excited about this because do y'all know what book is in here? And that's also why I'm like, well, what do I read? I don't know because I also, I need to start a separate reading vlog for specific book series. And then I need to do two books for the old Patreon. So honestly, I'm probably going to end up starting Go Hex Yourself this morning. I think is what I'm going to do. I have that song that's like, steady try to find the mode of... Why do I have that stuck in my head? It's like I'm a sad middle schooler all over again. Oh my Lanta, this is gorgeous. Jacob, do you know what you're in the presence of? Do you know? He's just wagging his tail at me like, okay, mom. Uh, so if you don't want another book, you probably already saw a little flashy flash of it, but you know, here's another warning, babes. Oh my God, it's beautiful. So this is the slip case and that it comes out. Out. And look at that. Oh my goodness, Gracianius. Here's the problem. I want to read this so diddly dang bad, but I don't. Oh, these end papers. Very slow. Ooh, this. Another slide. Um, I want to read this so bad. Babel or the necessity of violence. T. Um, I want to. <laughs> Let's start the sentence for a fourth time. Maybe I'll finish it. I want to read this so be it, but I have so much to do. I'm just like, do I have time to read you? Do I care? Not particularly. Still want to. <laughs> but then also I was like, 
meant to read Poppy War before this came out, but you win some, you lose some. But let's look at those sprayed edges. Hello, 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 hello. I love that. This is beautiful. This is gorgeous. So the other thing is I want to read it, but do I read this copy because it's so beautiful? I'm sick to read it. But I guess I could anyways, like who cares? I cares, just kidding. Found out who cares, it's me. <laughs> I don't wanna mess it up cause it's so dang pretty. Life is so hard, you know? It's just so hard to make so many decisions. So I'm just not gonna make one. And instead I'm gonna go get a quaff and a croissant because our freaking oat milk got recalled, so can't make it at home. Oh, darn. Usually I, you know, try to come up with a solid excuse to go get coffee instead of make it at home. Not during the fall time and winter time, though. I'll be quite, quite honest with you. Um, Flavortown is at Starbucks at that point in time. So, like, the pumpkin, and then you got the chestnut praline. Like, I'm going to just keep going to them and lose my entire paycheck in the meantime. You know, right now... I probably, uh, for a vanilla lot, I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't. Exactly. So let's go get a coffee because um, I'm gonna hulk out if I don't have a form of caffeine. It's not good. I know. It's fine. I don't care. And let me also get a new battery because this one is looking a little, so, a little iffy. Oh, wait. I did also read some more of Daisy Hates. Hey, yo. I was not actually at 40% like I thought. I am now, though. And it's it's fine. You know, it's still going. It's just... I don't know why. I don't care about these characters as much as I did Magnolia Park. I just don't. Like, I didn't even really, honestly, reading Magnolia Parks, I knew I shouldn't like her and BJ as much as I actually ended up liking them. Because I was like, I was not in y'all's heads. If this wasn't about you, y'all are toxic. Like, this is not... Like, y'all aren't... I honestly don't think they're good friends either. And it's not because they're not capable of being, it's because they just like are so wrapped up in themselves. This is not, this is a tripod. I'm not wheeling it at you. I'm just feeling passionate. And um, Daisy and Christian, I like the tension that's building, but also then Roma was in there and I'm like, hello, I guess but you're kind of ruining my Alex Pettifer moment. <laughs> Anyways, let's actually go get caffeinated and then we'll figure out what we're gonna read, okay? Okay, we have pants on now. Um, you know what I'm not gonna splurge for? Shoes. We're gonna wear some slippies. Call it a day. And now, are you ready? We're gonna go get Starby, 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 Starby's Bucky's, 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 Bucky's. You ready? You ready? You ready for Bucky's? Bucky's, 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 Bucky's. Man, this is not the energy I was looking for this morning. He's like, I'm going back to bed. This is too much. This is too much. Get away from every little thing just to try to make it through. Good morning, Krusty Grab. Okay, <laughs> that's way more energy than I actually have, so I just gave it all to you. Mary Chrysler. Uh, so my partner has left the building to go get Bucky's. Bucky's, Bucky's, Bucky's. <laughs> I will never not say it that way. Uh, and it is their birthday tomorrow. So I actually have to get a bunch of work done and get some, I gotta edit a video. I gotta read at least a book and a half, hopefully two. We'll see. And then I need to build my freaking record storage that just got here. It's literally right in front of me. So I'm gonna show you all that. I don't know if I'll show you me building it because... I'm a passionate builder. Um, read. I get angry when I try to build things, and I don't really want that in your life. Um, it's for you, not for me. But I'm very excited to have somewhere to actually put my fabric and records because I have so many of them now at this point in time. But also, I wanted to show you that I cleaned out all of the clothes that I do not need. Look how many. What are those? Things that you clip at the bottom like a like an infant <laughs> onesie. I have so many of those. I have one in every neutral color you could think of. And that's my wardrobe. This pair of jeans, boom, clothed for the day. Yeah, I don't know why I wanted to show you that. We're gonna get to building this this guy. And I got this off of Overstock. I could not find literally anything that worked. This is from Crosley Furniture. Uh, it's large record storage console cabinet, and it's gonna go right here. Right there. And, um, 
Yep, but uh, the books that I'm reading, here's a little hint. Uh, and that'll be up next Sunday? This coming Sunday? When is this video going up? What? Hold on. Today's Thursday. Is it? Yes. It is. This Sunday is a 48 hour readathon. Tuesday is this video. Hi, how are ya? And then next Sunday, yeah, is that video. There you go. There you go. So, uh, yeah, that'll be up. But let me put on my freaking new Illumineers record. It's so beautiful. It's the Walmart exclusive and it's like marble. And, uh, get to building this guy because that's gonna be fun. I'm sure. Okay, hi guys. So it is Thursday night. It is 9.26. I did read a little bit of Go Hex Yourself, that vlog that I'm doing. And then also, I have gotten a little bit further into Light Lark. I did decide that this was going to be the one I went with. I grabbed the audiobook to go with it. Um, surprisingly, my library had a ton of copies, so that's pretty cool. But uh, I love that this book, like under the cover, actually has the title on the naked cover, so I don't to keep grabbing the thing you know the thing the dust cover hello so i am on chapter eight page 61 and i am liking this uh i just so what's going on is we have this world where a, there's you know a bunch of different essentially courts and there's a ruler for each court and one has you know the power of the stars one has the power of the sun darkness the main character she's the leader of the wildlings another one is the leader of the like sky basically so air and all of that and they come together every hundred years at a thing called the centennial which is hosted on the mainland which is where the sun king is the ruler and they it's like kind of this game but it's more of a game of wit and outsmarting an alliance so i can see where the relation to the hunger games is it has like really no social commentary that i have seen thus far just having like they're all in this one place and they have to form alliances and make it out alive and it's all politically done i can see the like the hunger games i would say is probably the most closely related thing when uh you know you're pitching a book and you have to like relate it to two other published works i guess makes sense why that one was one of the chosen ones and then it also makes sense why Akatar was because I'm already sensing a love triangle and one of them is perceived as the bad guy the villain it's the dark-haired broody one of course the sarcastic one and then you have the literal sun god who is you know well liked by everyone and still a little moody though and so she's going to this centennial to try to win back well it's to try to break the curse but in order to do that one of the rulers has to killed as like kind of a sacrifice and that's not great so yeah that's kind of the book though is like they're all here it's like a game of who's gonna win who's gonna you know be the one that's taken out they have different it's kind of like showcasing of powers each ruler gets to decide how they do it if you've ever watched the real housewives when they go on a girl's trip or something like you know pretty much every season there's a few of them that host a trip on their own they're kind of like the main housewives it's like that just in a fantasy world and i'm really liking it i like the writing it is very purple prose it is overdone on the metaphors but i really enjoy that like i said i think that's a pretty well like, if one of my favorite YA series of all time of all time is Carvel. stephanie garber is a favorite author of mine auto by author of mine favorite of all time obviously i like purple prose like that if you like the writing style of Carvel, but you want a little bit more of like a fantasy not a fantastical one i would suggest reading this i mean this is basically it it feels like this could be very similar to a Stephanie Garber book. I wouldn't be surprised if this was something that she had written, honestly, just because the writing style is so similar and I really like it. So I'm enjoying my time thus far. I'm not, you know, too, too far in, but I'm about, well, actually it's about a 400 page book. So I guess I'm almost a fourth of the way through. I'm just going to keep reading along in here with this and listening to it as I go. And that's just the plan for tonight. Tomorrow we're going to this diner for my partner's birthday so i will obviously take you guys with me to get you know because if you if you go out to eat and you don't film it 
or post it on Instagram. Didn't really go, you know, obviously. So I'll show you guys that. And yeah, for now though, I'm gonna get back into this guy and update you if I have any thoughts or feelings. One thing is she describes, and I love this, I do, when they really describe the clothes and the food. And this author does both of those. To me, the reason I like that is because it creates a lot of ambiance for me. So I like food and shiny things. And that's in here. So I'm having I'm having a good time. So here's the record storage situation. I have my Evelyn Hugo, of course, stack of books, sweatshirt that I changed out of randomly last night, plant I'm trying to revive. And then these are the records that I have thus far. And I think this looks pretty nice and I cannot wait to fill this entire thing in. Okay, hey, so it's Friday day. I thought it in my head and then it just came out of my mouth. I should stop doing that. Uh, but last night I got some r -r reading done. Y'all know how I take like, I, well, if you don't know, I'll tell you. I do this moment and then I take like a little thumbnail like just like that. Look how white this makes my forehead. It literally looks like, like this. Ugh. Why does it do that? It's like a person could be translucent. I'm close. <gasps> oh my God. God, that's so freaking cool. Literally, as I've just held this up, for Rickon, the author just reposted me on her story. That is some, uh, sorry, there's a gnat and it had to die, it could not wait. But that is Inception. I am just, that's so cool. What the heck? Oh my God, let me get out of the DM before I say something embarrassing. Anyways. So I did read quite a bit of this. I'm on chapter 18 and it is page 130. And I've got to say, y'all, I don't really know um, what everyone was expecting because I did not follow her until literally yesterday. Yesterday I followed her on TikTok. Also, I've been so on and off TikTok because I don't know, when I have anxiety, my brain is like, delete every app you have. And then I do it. And then I'm like, Pfft. but I miss the memes. So then I go back. It's it's a moment that we're having for sure. But uh, anywho, didn't follow her. So I didn't really see a whole lot of the promo for this book. I just saw the cover and I'll be honest with just this and this, it looked like something that would be, okay. So like Veronica Speedwell and the strange case of the alchemist's daughter and kind of those gothic girl, like group books that, well, Veronica Speedwell. Yeah, her and Stoker, they're girls. They're girly pops. They love each other. I love them. But they're a little girl gang, for sure. Um, That's like a genre in my head. It's not literally one. I know that. But they kind of all go in the same thing. So if you're going to recommend them, it'd be like recommending thrillers that take place in a snowy place. Like it's kind of what they have in common, right? So this just looks like the vibes of the genre that like Carval and pretty much all of Stephanie Garber's writing would fall into. I don't think it's as, I think there's a lot more structure, but Roshani Tchotchke, she also has very beautiful, that kind of like purple prose writing, as does Lainey Taylor. So all of those kind of remind me of similar elements and this looked like it would fall into that category. So I was already interested in it. And I don't know what she isn't serving that she promised to, like was on the menu, but I'm liking this. Like I I'm liking it a lot. We have like, you know, our dark mysterious love interest. I did see one, one critique that I was like, you know, out of context, I can totally see why this would be a weird thing in a book because both love interests are 500 years old because our main character has just recently come into the throne. So she is younger. I'm assuming 20s is what it sounds like. All I'm gonna say, Akatar. Okay. 
from Blood and Ash. Throne of Glass. It kind of happens. It's like, you know, because then you're like, they're 500 years old. She's 20. I don't know. Is it? That doesn't bother me because I'm just like, yeah, that's like every YA book, I swear. The only one where I think that they were all the same age despite being fey, maybe, is it these twisted, not these twisted bonds, these hollow vows. That's the only one I can think of. So anyways, I'm really enjoying this. The writing style is flowery. I think it's still good. Like, I don't know, for what it is, a YA fantasy. I I'm having a good time and I'm nervous to say that because when I posted it on my story and then I posted a TikTok of it, no one said anything on the TikTok and I was like, oh, okay, so like we're, we're reading this. We're like all having a good time. Cool. But then when I posted on my story, so many people swiped up and this is not like a bad thing for them, but they were like, oh my God, I can't wait for the tea in the vlog. And I'm like, the tea is I must either have bad taste, which is fair, or like it's not that bad of a book. I don't know. Also, I feel like the conversation that was like originally attempting to be had about this really didn't actually have anything to do with the book. It had more to do with the author. I don't even know. I don't even, I don't even know. I don't know. So I'm having a good time. I'm enjoying it. I'm going to bring it with us as we go out today. It is currently 9.05, so you know, I'm ready for the day. I got my face done. I just filmed an intro for the video going up on Sunday. Bloody Sunday, so that's good. Can you tell that I've been um, playing this guy a lot? Cause I have. I also just realized I have not one, but two folklore. Couldn't tell you why. But uh, anyways, I'm going to continue with this just for the little bit of time we have before we have to leave here. And then I'll just keep you updated. And uh, yeah, I already checked out the menu for this place because I've never been before. They have a chai, an iced chai. I'm gonna get that with, they don't have oat milk, so I'm gonna do soy because I think it has the closest consistency. I hate bleh, almond milk, I just do. And I'm gonna, it's so weird. I'm gonna get that and nachos. I love being back in college. Honestly, I really did live off of Starbucks and Chewy's in college. So that's, that's not a complete lie there. Anyways, I'm gonna go. Jake, anything to say? Nope, okay. Hello, so it's Saturday at 8.26 p.m. I just finished Light Lark and I have a lot of feelings, so I'm going to save my thoughts on this until tomorrow when I've had time to kind of, you know, sleep on it and think about it. But it's at least a four star for me. It's at least a four star. And what I can say right now comfortably, if you like Stephanie Garber's writing, the love interests and relationships in Caraval and you like actual YA fantasy not Sarah Janet YA fantasy this is for you this is it like this is OG YA fantasy playing into like all of the just greatness that is YA fantasy but let me let me let me sleep on it and think about how to really talk about it because there's so much happened <laughs> my favorite thing is when books like just throw you through a loop in the last 50 pages and let me tell you the last 100 pages of this i was just like oh we're over here now oh wait what's happening over th oh oh dear like it was just everywhere you look chaos oh my god that was good though i really liked this hello sayer 
It is Monday, so I'm gonna obviously end out this vlog. I did want to pop back in and just kind of talk about my feelings of Light Lark. Um, I do feel like it's just a run-of-the-mill YA fantasy. It is not, you know, something groundbreaking, but I'm also not always looking for something groundbreaking. So listen, I'm not, I'm not mad about it. I thought it was fun. The writing, the only thing that was repetitive was like the names that the love interest multiple yes would call her and how she would refer to people that was kind of super incredibly repetitive if I'm honest not enough that I was like down with this book like it's just not good it was fun it was a fun time I read it in like a day and a half two days maybe it's a good quick little fun YA fantasy time I would recommend it if you again like books like Caraval by Stephanie Garber. It made me want to read Once Upon a Broken Heart even sooner because I will say I think that Stephanie Garber's writing is better. I just think that it's more mature in their writing but I also think that they are at different points in their author career and also just life so that kind of makes sense to me why one would be more mature than the other um, just in terms of how long they've been writing and you, I feel like your writing can mature with you so it makes sense to me at least why that's the case but I still think it was fun I don't think it was you know this like god-awful book it was a little cheesy a little over the top a little dramatic but that's how I like my YA fantasy so I was into it and then there was one other thing that I did want to mention because I've seen it in my um, comments and I've got a lot of DMs about it uh, and that is the whole teaching thing so I used to talk about teaching a lot on here. Not even really, not truly. I really didn't talk about that much, but I would mention it here and there. This is my tripod, just so you know what I'm winging around. But I would mention it here and there. And um, I got a lot of the typical teacher stuff that you get online when you, like I would see it on teacher talk. There's just people who don't know anything about your job or don't know anything about the state that you teach in or the curriculum you have or don't have. And, um, judging you, telling you how to do your job, that kind of thing. So I just was like, you know, I don't really want to have that <laughs> avenue open. So I did stop talking about teaching. But then this year, the beginning of the year specifically, and the end of last year, my health um, is pretty bad. I mean, it's not like awful, but it's not, I'm not like, life is a highway, but I'm not really riding it right now. I'm kind of on like the side road just in case, but I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to get back on the highway. I am, I truly am. But um, another thing that I don't talk about regularly because I go to a doctor, I don't, you know, I don't really want to get like all of the opinions and judgments that kind of come along with sharing medical stuff online. And I just don't want to talk about it because it's not fun. And I don't like it. <laughs> it's it's not a great time. But uh, it's one of the reasons why I had to stop teaching. So no, I will not be going back this fall um, because it's not good for my health. And also my health is like, it's getting better since I've stopped teaching, but it's not fantastic. And I don't want to talk about really either of the two because I don't really talk about them much here. You know, I'm really sad <laughs> that I'm not teaching. So I don't want to talk about that. It's all right by you. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention it in this video because I know everyone's going back and I'm not bitter or jealous or anything seeing the classroom setup video is fine, um, but that's it. I just didn't want, I, I shared it on Patreon when it happened. I just didn't want to like, you know, shout it from the rooftops. But I've gotten so many comments about it from a couple people that I was like, okay, I'll just like, I'll mention it real quick, but I don't want to talk about it again. So I'm not going to, but that's it. There you go. So the emoji of the day is going to be a coffee cup because it is time, it is, yeah, it's time for me to get a coffee and it's time for me to edit this video. So thank you so much for watching, for hanging out with me this week. I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or night, wherever you are. I'll catch you in my comments down below and in my next video. Bye. Hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy But things are finally right With you and I The future is
Preto.